The Mezcal Tones are a six-piece band from Sydney who have just released their fourth album, Agave Soiree, with a very appealing cover on it. Not long after playing an amazing 10 shows at the Tamworth Country Music Festival, I am talking to guitarist, band leader, Neralita, and lead singer, Cole Padre, to find out all about it and about the album. Hello, Neralita. Hello, Cole Padre. Hello, hey. Sophie. Thanks for having it. It's an absolute pleasure to be talking to you again, although I'm not sure if you can have recovered from 10 shows at Tamworth. That's a really packed schedule. So take me through it. How was it? Have you indeed recovered? Okay, so we were very fortunate to be um, to have shows booked at West, both at the Diggers and the Leagues Club. We're alternating between those two. And plus we did a, a showcase at the Fan Zone and, of course, Tamworth Shopping World. I mean, one has to do... Nice. <laughs> we had to do a show there. Chad does one, so we had to do one. Anyway, it was um, quite hectic, but um, very successful, and we've been booked again for next year. So very, very happy about that. Well, they're obviously getting in early to make sure that they can get you, because I would imagine if they hadn't, other venues would have snapped you up. But Cole, how do you take care of your voice with a schedule like that? Because it's a yeah, you know, these are long shows. It's not just three songs and you're out of there. Yeah, well, thank, that's a good question because it's something that you, you don't realise until you go on tour how, how how important it is, and it all comes down to warm ups. I, when I when it's just your, your average sort of you know one gig a week, it doesn't really matter. But if you if you do the warm ups, and I used to, used to laugh at warm warm ups when I was younger, but you do the warm ups, you do the right thing, you don't gas on. Like some people like to talk a lot, not me. Not me, I'm not like that. But after a show, you don't gas on afterwards and drink lots of stuff. You, you go home, you eat lots of good food. She talks a lot after the show, not me, not me. So, yeah, and be careful, you know, you, you just got to do the right things, make good choices. Do you have, so you have warm-ups. Is there such a thing as a warm down for the voice after a show or is it just not talking too much is the warm down? You know, all the rules are you're supposed to just simply have uh, warm or room temperature fluids mm -hmm. as you'll notice that I, I always do that in my shows I'm always having fluids well, that's, that's because the beer the beer gets warm by the time it's been on the stage for half an hour is that what it is that's why I buy six at a time anyway kitties I'm just I'm just joking kitties any children watching this this is just a joke ladies and gentlemen um but yes yeah, so the warm down involves um lots of warm beers <laughs> <laughs> sorry kitty no it doesn't there's no such thing as a warm down in my world no it, it just sort of I go to sleep that's a warm down right. <laughs> now Neralita anyone who has seen the band live knows that you and Mimi who features on the cover of the album are fabulous and there is a lot of fabulousness, fabulousness that goes on I'm wondering how you maintain it in the Tamworth heat though it's it's quite an art I look it's game face on Sophie it's just like you know what no matter how tired you are you just get up on stage have a, like a G&T and just get into get into the groove. I love you. She's so good, isn't she? <laughs> I, I make it through there with my... I'm surprised you didn't ask me how I look so beautiful all the way through. Basically, I look at the world through rose-coloured glasses and everybody looks beautiful to me. But um, she wouldn't allow anybody not to look fabulous. She, she runs... And you forgot to mention, she also also drives the Winnebago. He's not just the boss of the band, but she also drives the Winnebago. No, but you know what? It's all it's all about keeping the um the look fresh. So we like have lots of different outfits. Mm -hmm. Um the boys have lots of different shirts to match the girls' outfits and we just like to keep it engaging and engaging. Isn't that good? And all of our shirts when we play in Tamworth in, in you know a nice cool 35 degrees and that is a nice cool they're all black. Yeah. They're all long sleeve <laughs> and they're, they're really well made. They're manufactured, really good, thick, well, you know, and I, they soak up the sweat. And, you know, you get something that, that adds about eight pounds, yeah. I reckon, <laughs> for David. And that's how we keep fresh is just have nice wet shirts. Well, I, well actually, well, I'm thinking you're warm down. Would it involve washing the clothes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, it must look like a, I, I imagine like a, a footy mum's line, you know, it's your turn to wash the team's jerseys. Because there's all these matching shirts <laughs> on the line. <laughs> and, and there they all are. All right, tomorrow. So that's good. We've got a few outfits. So we, we made it through 10 shows pretty well, actually, without having to wash, oh. wash the clothes. I mean, 
Well, even then, I don't really want to know what the washing smelled like as you were driving home, but that's neither here nor there. So I think what happens on tour stays on tour. You know that. You've been, well, we've been on tour together. We know that, okay? That's true. That's true. There are some things that shall never be spoken of again. Meryl knows what I'm talking about. All right. So you play regularly around Sydney um, in the main. Um, you also keep up a regular rehearsal schedule. I'm wondering why it's important to you to rehearse so regularly when you play so much, because some bands would just think, you know what, playing is the rehearsal. Now or later, I think that's a question for you. And it's definitely a question for her, but can we replace the word regular with grueling um, <laughs> and, and, and punishment, get that in there somewhere. So anyway, go ahead with our regimented grueling schedule. So <laughs> So basically, I like to keep the band well rehearsed mm -hmm. and also introduce new material. So uh, to keep to keep the sets fresh and, um, yeah, so you don't expect the same set list each time you come and see us. Yeah. And dance. And dance. And, and, and dance, yeah. Do you know how many songs you know as a band? Um, about. Some people would say after a gig that I don't know any yeah. of them. About 60 or 70, something like right. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot to keep in the repertoire at any one yeah. time. Yeah, but yeah. she's supposed to know 90. Yeah. Right? And you're marking her constantly, Cole. It's a numbers <laughs> game, Sophie. I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Look, I like the way you've tied that in there. It's very neat and I appreciate the synergy. Maybe we could call it that. That's okay. a theme that's emerging. <laughs> we can go with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I calculate that's correct. But I did ask that question deliberately about rehearsal because it goes to uh, the consistency of the output on the new album, Agave Soiree, because what struck me straight away about it is how tight the band sounds. Now, when you play live, you are an incredibly tight live band. That's why you have people coming back. Well, it's one of the reasons why you have so many regulars who come to your Sydney shows, who come back to your Tamworth shows year after year, because they know they're going to have a really entertaining time because you're really, really good. It doesn't always translate to recording though, because the studio is obviously a different environment. So how did you ensure that you could replicate that sound from your live show or the tightness of the sound in the live show on this album? You know what, Sophie, what we did is like we... She's nailed it, hasn't she? Yeah. We actually um, made sure that we were playing all the songs on the album live for at least, what, three months, four months right. before we went into the recording studio, rather than just sort of write the tracks and um, keep on working on them. We made sure that we finished them in time so that we could include them in the set and um, make sure that they del delivered live as well. And not just that, but just the, little, the little tweaks, you know, you, you're doing it and you just hear something, you go, yeah. And, and it really, we're not, a, we're not a, a, a band that's totally loaded. We're really stoked. We're sponsored. We're happily sponsored by the Manly Longboard Company and that really helps us out. We wouldn't be able to record at all if it wasn't for that. But the luxury of going into the studio and writing an album, oh, that would be awesome but that's not us we have to be totally rehearsed so you actually you actually nailed it it's all about and we rehearsed and rehearsed we wrote we tweaked we tweaked and we got them exactly how we we knew we wanted we we did pre-production -pre -pre recordings of them we we knew what we were going for and um and we were able to go in there and just get it really positively I also really like that the structure of the album mimics one of your sets. You start with an instrumental and you end with an instrumental. And so it's, it is like this whole journey. But when you were choosing which order to put the songs on the album, were you thinking of it like that? I was, yeah, base, it's, you're quite right. That's how I write the set lists. I, um, we usually do she stuff. look at keys as well and how the, the next song will relate to the key before it when she puts the set list. Yeah, but I usually try to start with an instrumental mm -hmm. um, in this particular... Just in case I'm late coming back from the bar or something. <laughs> that has happened. It's been witnessed. <laughs> I, I know. I know to come back. Oh, they're playing. I must be needed eventually. <laughs> but um, we don't always end with an instrumental, but it felt right to put um, Amity Isle at the end of this as a sort of... Con concluding song on this album so yeah and it does work well because it's sort of when the album's on repeat it's you enter the cycle again and then it's like yeah. oh I'm back here how great uh, and yeah. there are several originals on the album Cole Padre are you the chief songwriter well I used to be uh, but management's got involved 
<laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, uh, I tell you what, it's interesting because Shango and I, um, basically the process with us is um, Shango will get an idea and, and, and work it to a certain level, bring it to the band. I'll, I'll get an idea, I'll, I'll work it to a, a certain level. Um, I might take it to Luki, our bass player, we might work s some stuff in, the, the, the bass line will then become a primary melody line in the thing before we bring it to the band. Uh, this album, I was taking it to Shango at first. Shango is bringing pieces into the band. Mm -hmm. um, let me, actually, now that, that's a pretty good question because when I think about the first album, uh, I was writing more second as well. And the, the last album, Shango really started to enjoy writing and and and, and um, he wrote a few more. And, and this album, I think he's taken a, a, a stride, quite a, a, a strong lead on this. Mm -hmm. We should say Shango is your lead guitarist. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense that he would be involved. Do you enjoy writing with each other? Or are this, is there some argy-bargy that goes on? Oh, well, how cool is that? That's a great question because it's really, it's really an awesome thing when we're writing stuff. If Before you bring it in the band, we've got a rule. Once it's in the band forum, we all own it and we just go for it and we, we do what we want. And if we feel uh, there's nothing extra we want to add, we leave that off. But mm -hmm. look, there's been times when there's there has been some no hold bars. I'm not going to name any names because I'm not like that. I wouldn't do stuff like that. But some people are more um, outspoken. Outspoken <laughs> in, in perhaps what they might want, uh, and others are just kind of easy going. But but yeah, the, the the songwriting has been absolutely awesome. You bring something to the table. And people just jump in and, and love it. It's like a big, big bowl of popcorn. I love the way you imply that Nero Leader is not easygoing when she has to put up with all of you just quietly. <laughs> Unfortunately for Nero Leader, she's my only comedy foil here. If, if there was someone else, I'd, I'd try and I'd try and blame them. But unfortunately, it's my beautiful wife. Who's gonna cop it. Guess who's going to cop it later? Yeah. <laughs> We should also say she's she's not only your beautiful wife, she's also your duet partner um, on a song on the album, and that song is Wouldn't Last a Day. Was it, oh, this is a question for you, Nara Leader, was it fun doing a call and response song with Cole? It was, it's great fun play, playing it on stage. We're very, very silly on stage together. But that song was actually, would you like to explain who you wrote the song? No, no, just today? answer the question, darling. <laughs> I'm enjoying your answer because you're so well spoken. So um, we have a whole lot of fun singing that song on stage, and like there's like certain glares at one another, yeah. certain sort of like. And then we do the song. <laughs> look, look, look oh, away, geez. look yeah. away after singing a line. It is a really fun know. song. So yes, Cole, who did you write it with? Okay, so. I get to do this really cool gag and it's not a gag because I said it by accident the first time I said, it's okay. If you, if you, if you wrote it with another woman, but you were thinking of another woman when it was happening. And I, I think I got away with it. So I, I said something like, so sure. I did rock. Anyway, no, I, I look, I tried it once. I think I got away with it once. Uh, that'll do. Uh, but yes. So I had this awesome thing. Um, I got retrenched during COVID and that was pretty awesome. And I thought to myself, I, I said to the missus, do you mind if I just sit on my backside and do nothing for six months and just write some songs? And um, she said, sure, honey, no problems. I'll, I'll do all the work. <laughs> and um, so I did that. And I, I went and did a, uh, I was asked by uh, the beautiful and talented Danny Young to do a collaboration. Now, this was years ago and I, I sort of didn't know what she meant at the time I wasn't sure um but I think she meant to write a song and um so I forgot about that and then I, I when I was unemployed I thought you know what I'm just going to go out and, and explore some songwriting things and contacted her and and she couldn't remember me at all um but we did she could of course she could I was just joking and uh I went around her place and we went to this beautiful area this little sort of almost an atrium with a beautiful, peaceful garden outside with these beautiful ferns. And I think there was little birdies tweeting outside. And we wrote this song about arguing. And it was one of the most peaceful and beautiful moments of my life. And she's cool. Danny, how you going? And that was really cool. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. And so, yeah, we, we were going to actually record it with Danny singing. 
right. and we were we but I like the song that much. I said, no, you can record it with me. I wasn't, it wasn't even going to be a mezcal tone song. It was just going to be out there. Yeah. And she loved it. And she knew that I was thinking of her when I was with Danny. And, <laughs> because... and it's, true you, you, it's true you wouldn't last a day without it, let's face it. <laughs> that is the name of the song. What happens on tour stays on tour, Sophie. <laughs> no, no, the truth is, yeah, Neri runs things around here. And, and she also runs the band. <laughs> Yeah. But it is, it's it's a really fun song to sing. It's very yeah. silly on stage. It's a fun song we, to listen to as well. Yeah. yeah we ham it up. Real. It's a little real. <laughs> we ham it up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but Nara Lady, you also took lead vocals on another track, and that's not something you've necessarily embraced in the past, actually. I've noticed you doing it more live. It was great to hear another song from you on the album. Are you singing more now than you used to? Or is it just a perception that I have that you are singing more? Um you know what? That was an, that was another song that Cole wrote with another woman. <laughs> and um, ladies, I, just look at the number at the bottom of the screen. Give me a call. <laughs> call me. Call me now. What are you wearing? <laughs> oh, you're outrageous! <laughs> Sorry. And um, anyway, and I said I really like that song. I I think it should be a mezcal tone song. And what what do you think about if I? but I had a go at singing it. And um, yeah, so it wasn't sort of intentional. I just thought it was a really, really good song. So I thought I'd give it a try and I think it came out okay. It did, absolutely. Um, now, Cole, this is a, a question for you. The band also makes great videos and the latest is Motorcycle Girl. And these yeah. videos are your creations. What do you like about the video process? Um. Not much, but I love the result. You know, like it's a lot of hard work. People think I want to go make movies, but you know, you 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 you're doing a lot of stuff. You you're writing um, every scene, you, and 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 you, it doesn't happen in order, and 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 you put it all together like this beautiful jigsaw puzzle. And um, we actually we were sh having a shoot uh, just a couple of days ago for episode three, actually, of Motorcycle Girl. So. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's what do I like about it, Sophie? You like the end result. You like the creation. Yeah, yeah. Creation. I, I do actually, I, I like, I like getting up early in the morning. I love <laughs> not drinking, <laughs> of, you know, being focused on something that's. You know what, well, we, we've got a really good um, camera guy. Cinematographer slash, ed slash editor. Slash editor who's fantastic to work with. Right. Really, really, really good. Brian Fisher. Um, we and worked with him on, one of the first things we did was the short film Uno. Um, mm. And we worked with him on that. And uh, he's very started working with him again. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's a fantastic guy to work with and makes things really easy and really smooth. Yeah, so, great. Well, yeah. people can find those on your YouTube channel. I think you have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, they can also find you live quite a bit around Sydney because you're a very busy live band. Now, where are your regular gigs for people who may wish to catch you somewhere soon? Okay, so we play once a month at the Orient in the Rocks. Uh, we're playing once a month at Narrabeen Sands Hotel. We play... Which is awesome because Narrabeen Sands Hotel is uh, like such a... A, a, a legend for Australian music, you know. So to play there is uh, is pretty huge, and they they have a good PA there, good sized room, and uh, good lines for the bar, you know. And it's just very important to me: short lines, short draw between the keg and the lot and the and the tap. It's a really good pub. Just so, so your beer can get warmer faster. Yes, yes. <laughs> get warmer faster. Good, you, you were paying attention. Dang. <laughs> and um, we play at the Marrickville Bolo once every three months. We've got our album launch this Friday night, March 3. Um, at... Well, we don't know when Sophie's going to post this. So yeah, it, it is true. March 3. We have to edit it out. <laughs> which is yesterday. We're doing we did that yesterday. Um, and we play at Collaroy Beach Club regularly. Uh, Shady Pines. In Shady Pines a lot of places, really, yeah. yeah. Shady yeah. Pines are really cool. They, they, they give us lots of gigs. And, and the yeah. reason why you get lots of gigs is because you are great live and even though I've known you both for a very long time, you are fantastic live and that's why I come back regularly because it's always a guaranteed good time. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to wrap it up there, but people can catch you in Sydney. You'll be back at Tamworth next year and they have the album. 
here it is again, agave soiree to enjoy. Not Cole Padre Neralita, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you very much, Sophie. Thanks, Sophie. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> Bye.